Hi everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture, we will be speaking about what an IP address is. So let's think back to the previous component of this lecture. We said that we had this network and we were interested in sending information across this network. And we spoke about, hey, we'd use a router so that we could pass messages. We wouldn't need as many cables. We could use a modem so that we could take advantage of the telephone lines. And we had all this great stuff. Well, ultimately, though, we didn't speak about how you would technically figure out that one machine is A and another machine is B. Like, how do you know who's who in that network so that you can actually send the message to the right address? Well, in order to do this, you have to generate a unique ID for each of the machines. OK, and that's what the Internet protocol does. It defines how these IDs for our machines are constructed, which are called IP addresses. OK, an IP address is just uh, at least version four of an IP address. And we're going to speak about different versions here in a minute. But IP addresses are composed of four numbers in version four separated by periods. So for example, 40.14. 114.177.156 is an example of an IP address. Okay, now every computing device on a network will have a unique IP address. You can't have two machines with the same address, or you won't know how to uniquely deliver information from one to the other. And each number in the set can have a range from 0 to 255. So the full IP address range goes from 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 also called local host or referred to as local host in some instances, to 255.255.255.255. The thing about IP addresses are you don't choose them and you don't take them with you. Okay, It's issued to you when you join a network. And the network needs to do that because um, they have to keep track of who all of the, uh, the, the nodes are uh, and if you could set your own IP address as an example, then you, you might create one that conflicts with somebody else. So the network has to issue you an IP address and will only do that insofar as you're part of the network. Okay. Another interesting thing you can do is you can look up what your IP address is actually using the internet. You might have done this before, but I've put a, a website where you can do this here on the right-hand side in case you're interested. So when you hear talk about IP addresses, you're, you might hear uh, a distinction made between a private IP address and a public IP address. So let's speak about the difference there. A private IP address is unique to your network. Okay. So for example, the Wi-Fi router uh, views your device with a private address. Okay. So you're your phone, your printer, your you know, all those things are sitting within their own. They can, with among themselves, come up with a way of setting addresses. Okay, a public IP address though is unique to the internet. So that public IP address, there's only one IP address like that on the planet. Okay, there has to be only one of those on the planet. Okay, your device accesses the internet through that router's public address. Now, up till now, um, when I mentioned IP, I have been speaking about IP version 4, which uses a 32-bit uh, address, making something on the order of 4 billion addresses available. Okay, If you look here on the right-hand side, this is because um, you know, 2 to the 32 gives you a maximum of this uh, 4 billion or so. Okay. The, the problem is, of course, um, there's way more <laughs> uh, than 4 billion websites that are probably going to be needed. We spoke earlier about there being something like 2 billion, right, in the earlier components of this lecture. And so this was recognized as um, the folks who are responsible for um, the internet protocol had uh, a set of meetings back in 2000 and uh, back in the early 2000s. And they decided that they wanted to create a, another version of IP 
that would use a 128-bit address, yielding 2 to the 128 possible addresses, which is um, 3.4 times 10 to the 38. I think that's um, not something we'll have to worry about running out anytime soon. The primary difference here is that it uses um, hexadecimal. So if you look at an IPv6 code versus an IPv4 code, IPv4 codes have these three numbers followed by a dot, followed by three numbers, followed by a dot, and so on. Well, uh, in IPv6, you have um, four digits that are hex, followed by a colon, followed by four more digits, and so on and so forth. And as you use some cloud services or other things, you're going to see both IPv4 as well as IPv6 show up, which is why I'm mentioning it here. So the main conclusions I want you to get from here is that the IP address uniquely identifies a computing device on a network. IP addresses are generated for use within private networks as well as public networks. IPv4 is a convention for assigning a unique numeric ID and address to a computing device. And IPv6 was developed to expand on the total number of addresses that are available uh, for use, because uh, 4 billion uh, is definitely not enough. <laughs>